بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو دا سیکنڈ ویک آف بیسک انجینئرنگ میکینکس ان دا سیکنڈ اینڈ تھرڈ ویک وی ووڈ بی کورنگ چیپٹر نمبر ٹو آف آور بک سو چیپٹر نمبر ٹو از بیسکلی اباؤٹ فورس ویکٹرس اینڈ چیپٹر نمبر ٹو از ویری فنڈامنٹل ان دا سینس دیٹ ایوری ویئر ان دا ریسٹ آف دا بک وی ووڈ بی یوزنگ دا کانسیپٹس وی ڈیفائن ان چیپٹر نمبر ٹو so uh, even though most of the concepts are not new uh, but you need to have a very very firm and clear grasp of all of these concepts before we move on so that is why i have dedicated two weeks to this chapter so that all of us we are on the same page before we move to more complicated things okay so let's move on so in this chapter first of all we will learn about what what what's the difference between scalars and vectors then we would discuss the addition of 2d two dimensional vectors then the vector addition in three dimensions and then we'll move on to something which is called a position vector and then we will discuss dot product or what we call as scalar product okay so let's start with the very easy and simple thing the difference between a scalar and a vector so you might have already learned this thi- these things in in uh, before before this course so just to reiterate scalar quantity is any quantity which uh, can be completely classified by a number by just a magnitude okay uh, however vector is a quantity which needs uh, a magnitude and it also needs a direction for its representation so that's the uh, basic difference between a scalar and a vector so uh, we are more familiar with scalar quantities uh, for example mass length temperature uh, the f- common vector quantities is for example velocity so or displacement what is the difference between distance and displacement when we talk about distance we talk about just the length in meters or kilometers or whatever but whenever we talk about uh, whenever we talk about displacement we talk ab- we, do, uh, we not only talk about distance but we also talk about direction what is the direction of the motion okay uh, so uh, a- and this very simple difference makes a lot of difference when we talk about analyzing vectors versus scalars so for scalars all the rules of algebra that we learned in you know long time ago th- those apply so scalars can add up uh, like 25 degree centigrade to 30 plus 30 degree centigrade equals 55 degree centigrade uh, but for for vectors addition is not that straight forward you have to use the triangular law of vector addition and similarly subtraction is not that straight forward so we will go in more detail as we move on okay so these are some of the common quantities of scalars versus vectors uh so we have on scalar side we have a mass length distance speed power energy work these are all scalars on the other side vectors we have displacement velocity acceleration force weight but friction friction is just a type of a force and momentum and there are many others okay uh so uh, these are the common examples of scalars versus vectors okay so now we look at some of the very basic uh, operations that we can do on vectors so the simplest operation that we can do on vectors is that of scalar multiplication and division um so any time we multiply a, a a vector with a scalar so that only changes the length of the vector the direction of a vector cannot change uh by multiplying with a scalar so for example if we have a vector v and so given this vector v 3v is 3 times v is another vector which is just a vector which is in the same direction as v but it is the length of this vector is 3 times that of the original vector similarly if i were to multiply it with something like 1 over 2 or we can say that if we divide v by 2 now this is the same as if we were to reduce the length of the vector v and if we multiply it 
with the negative number so the direction of the vector also changes okay so multiplying with the negative number changes the direction of a vector multiplying or dividing with a positive number only changes the length of the vector uh, and so uh, we can add vectors to so vector addition is commutative which means that x plus y equals y plus x similarly vector addition is associative which means x plus y plus z is same as x so if we were to add x to the sum of y plus z that is same as adding z to the sum of x and y and so we have a zero vector uh, we add any vector to the zero vector we get the same vector and we have negative vectors so a vector with minus itself gives zero okay and then if we multiply a scalar with the product of a sum of two vectors uh, we multiply a, a scalar with sum of two vectors this scalar gets multiplied to both of these vectors similarly if sum of two scalars get multiplied to a vector the, that scalar is multiplied to both of these vectors um, again these are uh, pretty much all the same rules that uh, normal algebraic quantities follow okay so there is nothing new here so far uh, in terms of uh, vector addition uh, relations okay so the next important thing is to learn about vector operations so how do we add vectors okay so vectors do not add up simply we cannot just add the magnitudes of the vector so what do i mean by that i mean is that if i have a velocity so so if i were to travel in a position of this let's assume this is my origin and if i travel in a in the so these are the north east west and south okay so i have this uh, we are moving on in space okay so if i move in the east direction let's say i move by 2 meters okay and then i move by sorry this has to be south and this has to be west okay so now if i move 2 meters it towards the east and then i move 1 meters towards the west uh so if i want to find the total displacement i cannot say that the total displacement displacement sorry let me just draw it displacement is not equal to 3 meters okay um uh, so uh, again if uh, the total displacement is just a uh, uh, a fancy word for saying that how far am i from the origin and we can already see that my distance from the origin is not 3 meters now we can find it using pythagoras theorem but uh, so this is the basic main difference between vectors and scalars when we add vectors we have to use the head, head to tail rule we cannot just say that vector u has some other direction vector v has some other direction so there are so to add these vectors we have to use what is called the parallelogram method or uh addition using head to tail rule triangular method okay so let me just reiterate what triangular method is for you so if i were to have two vectors u and v okay so this is the vector u and this is the vector again i need the uh, 
this is the vector v okay so now we want to add these two vectors so we want to find w which is just equal to u plus v okay uh, so first thing we have to do is we want to move one of these vectors to the head of the other vector vector using parallelogram method okay so what i don't want to do is i want to move this vector v here okay so i have just displaced this vector from here to here so now this is my new v vector okay and so the w vector now is just this vector w as shown in this figure and so i can either move u or v it, it's up to me even if i were to move u, u rather than v so i'll get still get the same vector so w is equal to u plus v which is also equal to v plus u it is straightforward statement does not need so let me just clarify that this is a plus sign okay um, so far so good so to, we can just add vectors using graphical analysis we can just draw those vectors on a page and then add them using this head to tail rule or what we call the triangular method so this is for addition what happens when we want to subtract two vectors so if i want to subtract v from u first of all i have to find so i want to find u minus v so this is my vector u and this is my vector v so first of all i have to find the negative vector of v which would be in the other direction then i displace that vector here and then i find the resultant vector which is u minus v okay i hope it makes sense to most of you guys okay so adding so subtracting one vector to another is just like adding the opposite of that vector um so we will also discuss some more examples of these but hopefully it's already very clear okay so let's move on uh so how do we add multiple vectors so let's assume we want to add three vectors a vector a vector plus vector b plus vector c it's very simple we just move one vector to the head of the other so let's see we want to add vector a b and c first of all we would like to add a vector a and b so we want to move the vector b the tail of vector b to the head of vector a so we want to choose blue color oh sorry okay so first of all we want to move vector b here now we want to add vector c to a plus b so this is vector b this is vector a this is vector c okay and now i want to add c to okay so this has to be parallel to the previous vector i want to draw a parallel to this vector so let me try again so maybe this is a better parallel vector so vector c so the sum of these three vectors is this vector let me draw it which color should i use maybe let's just draw it orange okay and maybe so the sum of these three vectors is this vector which is equal to a plus b plus c okay so you can already see uh, that we do not need any uh, analytical techniques we can just add these vectors using uh, graphical analysis and it doesn't matter how many of these vectors we have 
we can have u1 u2 u3 plus u4 plus u5 u plus u6 we can just keep adding them as many of as we have and then we get the resultant vector like this okay another point to note here is that i could start off with c then i could move v on top of c then a on top of both of them i would still get the same vector okay so uh, as i told you earlier vector addition is uh, uh, first of all it is commutative and it is uh, distributive i can just add any two numbers first and i can add the last one after that so it wouldn't make any difference okay so let's move on uh this is for addition of vectors a few important formulas that you really need to uh, have be very comfortable whenever we are dealing with vector addition is the sine and cosine rule so the sine rule relates uh, the angles of the three angles of the uh, triangle with the three lengths okay so a is the length a over sine of a so length this length divided by the angle on the opposite side is equal to this length divided by angle on the opposite side is equal to this length divided by the angle on the opposite side okay so this is what we call the sine rule okay the cosine rule is uh, it relates uh so if you are given two angles and one side and we want to find the other other side we would use sine rule okay uh, for cosine rule it relates one angle and all three sides okay so a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a cos of this angle okay so whenever we are given three sides and one angle we like to use cosine rule okay whenever we have to we are working with two angles and two sides sine rule is more beneficial okay and these are just we can just derive them using uh, pythagoras theorem okay and as your assignment uh, you are going to uh, prove sine and cosine rule using pythagoras theorem okay uh so uh, what do i mean by using pythagoras theorem that we assume that pythagoras theorem is true and then we want to prove both sine and cosine rule um uh, it's pretty straight forward uh you can just google it as well but i want to uh, so you would have to submit this assignment uh on uh, google classroom you have to hand write your assignment and then you have to take a picture of it and then you have to upload it on google classroom okay uh so with these in mind let's look at now some examples okay so this is an example from the book we have a screw i which is subjected to two forces there is force f1 and then there is force f2 find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force on this hook or this screw i okay an important thing to note here is uh the convention used for vectors is we either make these vectors bold to differentiate them from scalars or we put an arrow hat on the top okay because whenever we are writing something on a computer making something bold is easier so in your textbook most of the times vectors are written as bold letters okay but in writing it's difficult to make things bold while you are writing with a pen so whenever you are solving your problems you would have to add arrows on top of the vectors okay so just to reiterate if we go back so if we look at this on this slide you can already see that any time we are looking at a scalar the scalar, scalar is normal point and the vector is in bold point okay so this is a vector these two are scalars this is a vector this is a scalar this is a vector this is a vector this is a vector so this is vector 0 so that is why it is bold okay uh so this is something i just want to clarify so that there is no confusion after that so we want to add these two vectors f2 and f1 so let's begin 
with adding these two vectors okay so let's see we draw first of all we draw the axes okay and then f1 again so first of all we are going to use the approximation that all these force forces are concentrated at this point okay even though the, this force is acting here this force is acting here so this is what we called a concentrated force approximation and then we are going to treat this screw i as a point particle okay so the first force is something like this at an angle 10 degrees from the vertical line okay and its length is 150 newton okay let me just try to be as clear as possible so it is 150 newtons okay so uh, now this is vector f2 now i would draw f1 on the head of f2 just so that we can make proper addition okay so i would choose maybe green color for f2 so this is my f1 sorry so the length of f1 is 100 newtons and it is at an angle of 15 degrees so this angle is 15 degrees and this angle is measured with respect to vertical horizontal this angle is measured with respect to vertical and so now we know that the resultant vector is nothing but this vector and so we want to find two things we want to find the magnitude and we want to find the direction of this resultant force okay so let's see first we would try to find the magnitude of this force okay so uh, so first of all we want to use some trigonometry again i go back to this blue color so if i draw a parallel line here i i know that this angle is going to be also 10 degrees okay so this angle is also 10 degrees and this is 90 degrees so this total angle is 10 plus 90 plus 15 okay so now that we know that this angle is total angle i can just replace all of that and i can just write that this angle as a whole okay so this angle is 10 plus 90 plus 15 is 115 degrees okay so this is 115 degrees okay so again this is also causing some confusion so let me just rub that off as well and we have to remember that this length was 150 newton and this was 100 100 newtons okay uh, so now we have one angle and we have two sides this is 100 newtons and this is 150 newtons and we want to find the third side we want to find this side so as we can as you can already guess that cos rule would come in very handy so what does cos rule say cos rule says that this side let's just say that this is x so this side is x so x square is equal to 150 square plus 100 square minus 2 times 150 times 100 times cos of 1 1 5 okay so I have done nothing new here I have just written uh, the cos rule for this triangle okay so this is how you can find the length the next question is how do we find angle okay so now that we have the length 
we can just use the sign rule to find this angle okay so we can use the sign rule to find this angle first okay so let's call this angle alpha okay so i know that 100 divided by sine of alpha is going to be equal to x divided by sine of hundred and fifteen degree. Okay. So again I can solve this to find alpha and now when we look at the direction I can mention the direction as this angle or I can mention the direction as this angle that is up to me. So I hope this is clear. I, I will not solve these equations because uh, you can just do them on your own with a calculator. So x is just the square root of everything on this side. So I can just say that x now is nothing but the square root of everything that is in here okay so you can just uh, solve it on your own i hope you guys understand the process of this calculation so we have this is the magnitude and this is the direction so this is the second example that we would solve uh, and uh, we would solve it together in the class this is also this is example number two of chapter number two in the book you can go ahead and look at it, this example but uh, we would solve it together during the uh, question and answer session again the solution of this example is already given in the book and you can go ahead and look at the book for the solution of this example okay so this concludes the first part of video lectures for chapter number two so next time we would start off by looking at resolution of a vectors into its components okay so i hope i all of you see i will see you see all of you in the next lecture